Hey, Mystic Michaela, spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, we are talking all about the royal family in aura color, their dysfunction, and what that looks like in their energy. But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Well, you know me and the royals. Yeah. Just not, not so interested in them. Never yeah. have been. You've been a royal fan forever. I'm like a royal watcher, not really a fan. Yeah, like a, you've been always into the royals. Your family is always, your dad is really We're into royal the royals. We're royal watchers. Yeah, you're We're royal not watchers. We're fans of them. Uh, your dad has a couple members of the royal family. That's another episode. That's we'll a whole other that. episode. Yep, the Baron and, and King George. That's, that's another that's, episode. But don't ask. I'm sure we'll hear a red rant very soon about the royal family. It, there is going to be a red rant coming. <laughs> now, I know. You've been, like the royal family, they've been under immense stress and press, <laughs> pressure. You know, their lives are very stressful. Right. But so, so is yours. You know, you, you have a lot going on. And hold on. Do you mind if I just oh. take a sip of this oh. coffee? Well, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Oh. Oh, that's loud. Oh, my Ooh, God. That's good. Oh, oh. Really, oh really good. Not, not Wawa coffee, but really good. It's stressing me out okay, a little when you do Sorry. that. Sorry um, yeah, Sorry so I... You know, there's good stress and bad stress. And like, right. I'm under a lot of good stress. I feel really blessed and grateful. I'm working on my angel numbers book. Okay. Oh, so, 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 so. Okay. Gonna, uh, that Cheerio that's left over on the table? Uh, yeah. I, I have it? Of course. Oh, thank you. Yeah, got it. Okay. No problem. Oh. Okay, continue. Continue. Okay. Sorry. I think sorry. the kids left that. Oh, Ew. Oh. Mm. oh, my God. So, so. Oh, it's get, a little stale. I'm getting a little ragey. It's a little stale. All right, continue. I'm getting sorry, a little ragey sorry. with sorry, your noises. Sorry, um, so, what was I saying? I can't even think. Like, you're. Talking about the book you're writing. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. But yeah, I've been under a lot of... I've been a little stressed out. And I think I... <coughs> oh, hold on. I got it. Oh. The Cheerios caught in my throat. Hold oh, my. On. Sorry, sorry. Are you drinking water now? Yeah, I'm going to have some water. Is that close to the mic or... I'll, I'll, I'm going to keep it away from the mic. Actually. Okay. You don't look very far away from it, but okay. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Very refreshing. <laughs> oh, my God. Really good. Purified. So I've been lashing out a little easier lately and things certain things set me off a oh, little bit like, more like what kind of things oh god like the noises you make like i can't <laughs> please stop well, you've been lashing out a lot at me lately you make a lot I of noises it's it's not your fault you make human noises and they just they they send me into blind rages See, and i'm I, really sorry i thought it was the stress that you're under and that's why you've been lashing out at me yeah I mean, well i think it, been, yeah yeah there's a lot going on they just built that new restaurant down two blocks down okay does that have anything to do with it? I don't no, know. No, no, no. no. I think, no. well, I think we, we were talking, you know, on the Facebook page, the Mystic okay. McHenley Spiritually, right. Spiritual fa- Facebook page. I said that all wrong because I'm that flustered you're from flustered. the noises that you're is making. It, is it the new toilet paper I've been buying? No, that's fine. Does I that bother you? I don't really I have a back, sensory issue. It's more we, of like a sound thing. All right. Um, a lot of us discuss that we have a real sensitivity to like chewing or slurping or like rubbing skin or things like like these little noises and they okay. make us normally very nice docile people a nice little empaths into absolute raging lunatics like we can't handle it so basically what you're saying is the purples and the indigos and the blues yeah and the always turquoises. are like wonderful yeah the most amazing nice people they're the best <laughs> people to be around yeah Unless you're chewing or slurping your food. Yeah. And All then right. it's just like that. So is, we looked into it. Okay. Like it's, it comes up so often on the page. So what is it? That we, you know, I wanted to talk about it. It's called right. misophonia. Misophonia? No, it's, no, that's a whole other very dark, sad thing. Misophonia. Okay. And you can self-diagnose as misophonia. We're going to talk oh, about that. Okay. So misophonia is a disorder where people have abnormally strong and negative reactions to the ordinary sounds humans make, such as chewing or breathing. <gasps> yeah, the breathing. <sighs> sorry. Oh. Sorry. No, it's okay. Oh, sometimes I do say it. Sometimes I do say, I'm sorry for breathing, guys. Like around my, my house. I know. Yeah, I'm like, I'm sorry for just breathing. I don't feel like the kids have it with you so much. Sometimes Brie will mimic you, which yeah. I guess is... One of the coping mechanisms, people who have misophonia, they'll mimic the sounds they hear. Okay. In an attempt to neutralize their anger. All right. <laughs> well, we let's see if you have it, right, and let's, let's see, see if I have I mean, it. I mean, I'm trying to think. Like the only time, like, it has, does it have? Does it have to only be chewing and breathing? Things like that. Oh my god. <laughs> because like, like, oh, a, I gotta take deep breaths. Because <laughs> like, if I go to the like, I don't go to the movies anymore because the the pandemic, but. <laughs> when I used to, the once a year, yeah, like it did bother me. Like if someone was talking during the movie, is that what they're talking about? I don't think that that that's like normal okay. because it's like a distraction. So I would always sit in the last row. That way, like no one, I could not hear the noise behind me. 
Yeah, you get disrupted by things that I don't get disrupted by, though. Like, right. when I'm very sensitive to those things. Yeah, but Like, that you don't like to sit in the middle of the room at a restaurant, and I don't care. Like that's that, not what we're talking about. No, this is different. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's All right. see. All, All right. right. So, um, you can go to the misophonia, um, institute.org and take the assessment, but this is, like, this is how you can kind of diagnose if you even have it. So, first okay. of all, you might have a condition similar to misophonia, but not misophonia. So, let's see if you have that, all right? Okay. So, I'm going to ask you a question, Scott. Am I upset by loud noises more than quiet or soft ones? Are like, do loud noises bother you? Like, a loud radio. Like, let's say you um, go to the beach. Sometimes, like, somebody's always blasting their radio. Does that bother you more than somebody softly rubbing their feet together would? No, and... It wouldn't be like the noise itself. It'd probably be the person that was doing it. Yes. Yeah. You'd be annoyed with the person thinking yeah. that they're like, like super important. Yeah. Like they're thinking they're a royal or something. Right. Okay. okay. So to me, it's like rubbing your feet together, like right by my head while I'm trying to watch TV. Yeah. Not that you do that or anything. I did it one time. Mm, so that <laughs> that would bother me more than the like the boom box on okay. the beach. I, I won't do that again. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just using it for the the listeners so they understand that they're normal and right. it's okay. All right. So I got. What did I get? I got. Okay. No. So if first you, one's no. If you say no, if you did say yes to that, by the way, that can indicate some sort of sensory processing disorder. Just so you guys okay. know. Also known as sensory over responsivity. I don't know what that is. Okay. Okay. So here's the second one. Okay. Just to see if it's misophonia or something else. All Am right. I upset mostly by noises that won't stop, like traffic? Um. No, not really. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, like if I'm sleeping and the alarm goes off, yeah, that's gonna annoy. Well, that's annoying. That's no, annoying. More but... like birds outside; they always chirp. No, that no, I'm not not really. Okay, I'm a no on that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm a no on that too. Like no, noises like that are I don't know traffic or that doesn't really bother me. Okay. Um, but anyways, if that does bother you, it indicates a highly sensitive person. Um, it just irritates you more than average. Okay. Okay. So that could be a lot of you might have that too. Um, and then the last one, I am afraid and actually feel fear like in the pit of your stomach um, of, what is it? Hold on. Oh, of certain noises. And I feel fear when thinking about the noise, like uh, a certain noise caught, like a, like the fire alarm at school. Okay. The only, no. I mean, if it's like a ghost in our house making the noise, <laughs> then I feel fear. But other than that, I don't feel fear. The only thing, that's the only thing I can think of, like, fe- like hearing, um, I remember that fire alarm at school. Because, like, remember at the beginning of class, even when I was teaching, like, it's like, okay, it's going to be sometime during this period. And you're like, oh, my God, when? Oh, my God, when? Oh, my God. Like, oh, that really? stresses me out. Okay, or no. the balloon popping. Oh. Like, when you know it's about to pop and you don't know when. Like, that makes me scared. Or, or the, um, you know, those cans of pop biscuits? I am deathly afraid, you know, when you unwrap the... The yeah, the, car- the container. Yeah, the container, yeah. and it has to pop. Yeah, I always make you do it. Yeah, the, yeah, that stuff doesn't bother me. Or like the champagne cork. Oh, I don't know if that counts. So, are you a yes on that? Oh, I, I wonder. That I'm could an- be. That indicates phonophobia in oh. young children. This may also indicate a sensory processing disorder. Well, it sounds like you a little bit. <laughs> me all right well anyways so but here's the test for actual misophonia okay okay Okay. i might be i hope i'm saying that right so misophonia or misophonia i don't know um okay so one are there sounds that you cannot tolerate even if the sound is soft that's a hard yes for me okay that um you can't give me i don't even all right like the crinkling of paper or the chewing of styrofoam no. Like if somebody chews on their styrofoam. I, you know, I'm so oblivious to things. Probably no. Yeah. Damn, I'm going to say no to that. Or like um, slurping or just sipping loudly or just yeah. <sighs> after a drink. <laughs> okay. So you're, we, by the way, I, I actually, I have this new device. It tells us how many downloads and <laughs> listeners we have. And right now we're only at four. People are left. It's like two red purples and, two, and it also does it by order color, by the way. Oh, and wow. a yellow, blue, and a red blue. It's Everybody like else a, is left. That's amazing because yeah. like we're pre-recording it. Right. Um, this isn't live at all. No. Do you? And the last one is to see if you have it. So if that's if you okay, do you instantly have a response to the sound that starts with irritation or disgust and almost immediately then becomes anger? That's a hard yes for me. That's a hard yes for you. Um, no, that's a, I'm going to say no. Wow. Okay. That, that, so no, no. Yeah. If you answer yes to both of these questions, then you have misophonia. Yeah. Okay. So you have it and I don't. I definitely have it. And how severe your misophonia is depends on your answers to a survey. You can go take it over at the um, the misophonia. It's like a misophonia assessment. And then there's like 
a grade you can give yourself with levels of severity. And that's like, uh, this is not an ad for them at all. It's just misophoniainstitute.org. We just did our research. Well, um, I, yeah. yeah and, I, and after you said this, I, you know, when I did this, like right on the, you know, right on the spot of the moment, yeah. sorry, spur of the moment here. Yes. Um, I wanted to see, because you say you have it, I don't have it. Yeah. And then they, they give you some tips to manage the sound sensitivity. Oh, tell me. And I want to see if you do these. Okay. All right. Do you use headphones and music to drown out trigger noises? Oh, my God. You know I do. Yeah, you do. I do. Because we share an office now. Yeah. So I don't know if you notice when you walk in, I put in the earbuds. Yeah. <laughs> well, I notice I've had full conversations with myself and never got a response. And I just thought you were agreeing. Because like sometimes you'll like nod your head. And I just thought you were agreeing with everything I said. I like, I like turn it way up. Yeah, because sometimes the clicking of the keyboard when you're on it versus when I'm, I sound like a yeah. like a real b word. You I might, feel terrible. It's okay. It's just when I'm concentrating, I can't I can't think properly when my misophonia is triggered, so I lose focus. All right. Well, I made a lot of decisions I that like, I thought I, you said yes to. <laughs> um, if a few clowns come over tomorrow for our readings, okay, feel free not to read them. Okay. You don't have to read them. Got okay. it. Okay creepy uh yeah yeah well <laughs> they were you know, things things have been tough for the clown industry yeah um number two wearing earplugs to limit noise intrusion i, I guess that would be, that'd be the same thing i just do right? the music thing yeah uh opting for seating on buses and restaurants at distance trigger sounds this doesn't bother me so the restaurant restaurant noises don't bother me okay you know practicing self-care with rest relaxation and meditation to reduce stress. Yeah, like if I if I don't like how I'm feeling, because I don't want to be angry and annoyed at people just making regular sounds, I'll take myself out of the moment and remove myself till I chill out. All right. Speak calmly and frankly with friends to explain this. I do. I say this all the time to you. I'm like, hey, I'm putting in my music, so if you have to ask me a question, you're going to have to tap me on the shoulder or something. Now, are you sure you have this <laughs> misophonia and not scotophonia? No. Because this sounds like all things only that happen with. No, I'll be honest. I have it with the kids. I had it growing up. I had it with my own family, friends, everything. Well, as a with the dogs, the cats. Sometimes I even have it as a spouse (laughs) of someone suffering with misophonia. I am here to tell you that I will no longer say to you, "Snap out of it." Are these tips for you? These are tips for me because I've been saying to you, "Snap out of it." You're really depressed. I'm not depressed. I don't know. That's what it just said. Okay. <laughs> That's what they say. So <laughs> like when you're slurping and I'm like making a, a grimacing face, you could like say, snap out of it. Stop being so depressed. Okay. Well, now what I'm going to do is actually I have this button on that device I bought. And okay. if I turn it on, it'll give out a beep that will actually be soothing to the empath. Oh. And they will come back and listen okay. to the rest of the okay, show. Okay, go ahead. All right. So I'm going to put on that button. And it's so low that they can't, they only oh, hear, only they don't hear it. Can sense and it. after we do these few ads, oh, that's we great. will get on with the Royals. Okay, let's do that. You know, your skin is your largest organ and it's kind of silly that we don't always take care of it or we ignore it. And I'm telling you, Osea is the product, the set of products that gives me all the skincare I could need. It's absolutely amazing. It gives my skin wonderful attention, all the self-care I deserve. Um, oh my gosh, I have three words for you. Undaria Algae Body Oil. That's four words. It is absolutely luxurious. You, after a bath, I put it on and it, my skin just soaks it up. It's rich. It makes me feel good. It's not greasy or sticky at all. Osea's Undaria Algae Body Oil instantly moisturizes and replenishes dry skin, leaving every inch silky smooth. Your skin is super soft and glowing with Andaria algae, acai pulp, and babu su seed oil. Osea soaks hand-harvested Andaria algae in barrels of oils for up to six months. The result is liquid gold, a rich, luxurious, never greasy body oil, fragrant with sunny citrus and top notes of sweet passion fruit. Osea creates skin and body care products powered by the sea. They've made clean, safe skincare products since 1996. It's vegan and cruelty-free. They're responsibly sourced, plant-derived ingredients. It's good for your skin and it's good for the planet. 
It's female founded and family operated by a mother and daughter team. And you can try Osea risk-free for 30 days and get free shipping on orders over $50. They even send free samples with every order and get 10% off your first order with my promo code KYA at OseaMalibu.com. That's 10% off with code KYA at OseaMalibu. That's O-S-E-A-M-A-L-I-B-U.com. Um, try it out and see what it's about. You know, I love, I absolutely love this company. It's just helping so many women, so many, so many families to modern fertility. Um, you know, there's, there's so much about fertility. That's a complete mystery. You're not supposed to know everything. Okay. It's, it's a lot of peace of mind that can be achieved with modern fertility. That's where the modern fertility hormone test comes in. Think of your fertility hormones as tiny detectives that can bring you tons of insight into your egg count, reproductive timeline, and even possible outcomes for egg freezing and IVF. Everything you need to know to get proactive about your fertility. That's why modern fertility was created. It's the easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You know, traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but modern fertility gets you the same info for $159. That's a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash KYA, you get $20 off your test. Also, if you have an HSA or an FSA, you can put those dollars towards modern fertility. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, how many eggs you have, and other important fertility factors. And you'll get lots of peace of mind. The results go deep into whatever hormone means. And you can also talk one-on-one with a fertility nurse to review your results and options for next steps. So if you want kids one day or maybe one day in the future, or you want clinically sound info about your body that can help you make decisions that's right for you, it's Modern Fertility. Um, right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash KYA. That means your test will cost $139 instead of the several hundred or even thousand plus dollars it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $20 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash KYA. That's modernfertility.com slash KYA. All right. So while you were doing those ads, um, I was actually checking my DMs. Yeah. Um, and because we're going to do a deep dive into your uh, your DMs yeah, and my segment. DMs later. We deep dive into Mystic Michaela's and Scott's Instagram DMs. Yeah. And I actually was, you know, getting some to, to go over. Yeah. And I've already gotten three to stop chewing so loud. Oh, my God. And stop drinking the water so loud. That's for real, though. People are going to message you. Yeah. Well, they've actually, they've done it. Obviously, in previous episodes, too. So this is not the first. I just hope they don't get violent. I hope so. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah. Well, anyway. All right. So I guess we're going to be talking about the royals. Right. Um, The, 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 you know, obviously the funeral of... uh, Prince Philip. Prince Philip. Again, I'm not a big royals buff or whatever. Yeah. Um, I know it from a historical standpoint. Oh, my God. This is a red rant. No. (laughs) No, keep going. You weren't supposed to hear that. Yeah. This is a Um, red rant. I understand how... The development of like an aristocracy came about. He was a history teacher. Yeah. Well, after the fall of Rome, Europe was divided into many different uh, clans. Okay. And should I do a little history? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it's just flowing out of you. Do it. Sure. (laughs) I like this stuff though. Go ahead. Teach me. Okay. So basically Rome held all of Europe together for a while. And then Rome fell. By uh, the Germanic tribes, okay, and and the, and the Huns attacking the Germanic tribes, but we don't need to get into all that. But basically, it split into this like decentralized place with all these different clans, all you know, all throughout you know France and England and what would be modern day Spain and all that stuff. And they needed like to figure out a way to protect themselves. What years were these? You're you're looking at it's called like the medieval period, the Middle Ages. Oh, okay. uh, we do usually it's from the fall of Rome, which is four seven six, so like around five hundred. We we put it at to let's say. The, the Renaissance, the rebirth, which is like the 1400s. Okay. So in that it's thousand a lot of time. year, yeah, it's yeah. a long period of time. Okay. But in that time, they needed to develop, especially in the, the earlier years, a system of protection. How do you protect yourself? Because the Roman Empire is gone yeah. and the protection of the Roman legions no longer exists. Yeah. So they came up with this idea of feudalism. Okay. Where basically everyone protected each other. So you would have a like a hierarchy. Mm-hmm. So like a king, a lord. Uh, then they had these vassals and then knights. Yeah, kind of like Game of Thrones. Right. <laughs> kind of like a Game of Thrones. Right, exactly. And then everybody else was basically, you know, I'm going to get into all the levels, but everyone else was 
a commoner. Okay, you commoners. Know, they had right. like serfs and merchants, but you you had it was everything was based on your birth. Mm. So like if you were born a lord, a yeah. noble, you were a noble for life. You couldn't get kicked out. Like if you did something stupid or you were a, a jerk or something, you're still a noble. Yeah, like, you no can't get canceled. What, you can't get canceled. Right. You can't cancel a noble. No cancel culture back then. Right. You're a knight. You're a disgraced knight. <laughs> right. You're a knight for life. Oh, still? Yeah. You don't okay. get Because you're noble. That, that was the last oh, level of noble. okay. And then if you're a commoner and you do the greatest thing on earth, you know, you... You know, you, you do great things. You're an amazing human. Yeah. You're always going to be a commoner. Right. You can never leave that level. Right. Okay. Uh, and that was what the whole system was on. And I mean, I guess at that for that time period, it made sense because like, how, you know, how do you decide who's going to be the king? Who's going to be the, the lords? Well, basically God says you're a lord. You know, you're born a lord. So you're yeah. a lord. That's like real convenient. To keep, right. To keep, yeah. a, to keep a structure. You right. Know? But <laughs> to me... That's, you know, in England, I know it's really kind of today. And I know we actually have been gaining a lot of British listeners. Ooh. So I don't want to, like, insult anyone. Right. But to me, it seems a very outdated way of thinking. Yeah. I think and, a lot of them might agree. Yeah. And to me, it's it's not if you're born into something, it's your merits for me. Yeah. And that's why I don't follow the royals, and that's why I really can't stand when people follow the royals. Right. Um, not, you know, you I know you follow the royals, but... I'm a royal watcher. I know you're a royal watcher. <laughs> But for me, it's like, it's like, like why? I mean, I know th- these people are like born into it. Yeah. You know, who are they? I don't even know their names. Was it Charles we'll and Henry it. and yeah, Ralph yeah. and All right. uh, you know George? Whatever. I know, I know. Yeah, and and it's just that you know when they you know I see these things, I know they got you got to walk two steps behind the queen. Yeah. And look, I, I respect the institution. Yeah. The, that the history of it, but for me, like you're just a person. Right. Like I'm a person. You're a person. Yeah. You, just because you were born into that, that would pass down from li- that line. What the does overall, that mean? I don't get it. The overall vibe I get, I just get overall it. vibe I get from just the monarchy today is that it's kind of like a you scratch your back, we scratch yours type of thing. It's like a way to generate income and interest and keep, I mean, I'm sure it's a huge, it's a huge draw for people to pay attention to things. And it's kind of like a symbol. It's a symbol of maybe national pride. I don't know. Like, because I'm not English, so I don't want to speak for them. No, it is, I think. I I mean, I don't want to speak for them because I don't know. But I think, like, it's also a symbol for people who don't have privilege of a lot of sad things, too. A lot of colonialism and all sorts of awful things that have come out of it. So it can be very triggering. But then... I'm like, you made that all intelligent and I'm just like, look at their colors. Cause I like, I think there's just something interesting when people who are just held on such a like high level have yeah. the same dysfunction as the rest of us. Right. And I find, and they're, but, yeah, but they but try then- to like hide it. <laughs> and that, that just stresses me out. So yeah. I like constantly am watching That's the auras your- to be like, you're, you're hiding that. I know you guys are faking it and yeah. it just, it bothers me. Yeah. That's my that's my interest. Okay, so that's your interest. And, yeah. what, and what bothers me is that like why do we care? Like if Prince <laughs> Prince Harry was like born to like like the Schwartzes in, in <laughs> you know, Brooklyn, nobody gives a crap about Harry Prince Schwartz Harry. Harry from Schwartz. Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, there's a <laughs> Harry <cares>. Schwartz. I, <laughs> God, of course you chose that. Boy, name. Of course I did. So <laughs> To me, it's like, you know, and, and again, it's not even the royals only. Like yeah. this, and here comes probably the red oh, brand part, portion. It's like, you know, other, you see other people that, you know, get onto TV shows, maybe like a talk show, like like The Voice or something. Not The Voice, what's that show called? The, the, the View, whatever. <laughs> and I'm not going to mention the And you know, like, they're only there because of their parents, what, right. what their father it's did or what their mother did. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that they don't work hard and they needed to work hard probably sure. to get to that point. Yeah. But you could work... And oh man, here comes a real. Oh man. god, here we go. You can like the way I view it yeah. is when you're born, you know they're, and I used to teach this to all my kids for for twenty years, you know, and let, think of it like a like Candyland. Okay? Yeah, you know, some people start right on the starting line. Mm-hmm. Some people start, you know, five spaces, you know, into the game. Yeah, you know, some people start on Grandma Nut. Some people. <laughs> st- <laughs> <laughs> some people start on, you know, whatever, the, the lollipop or the, yeah. the ice cream cone. And some people start 20 spaces behind the Yeah, they're the not board. even on the board. So that person on the, the talk show obviously started, you know, at the candy cane or whatever. Yeah. You know, and other people, 
you know, never can get to the candy cane. So they can work as hard as they possibly can, but yeah. they're never getting to the candy cane. Right. Be- because of where they're starting in the game. You can't yeah. catch up and can't, you know, everyone who's played Candyland knows you can't catch up. No, you won't. Unless you get a, you know, you oh my hit gosh. one of those. Unless you pick the freaking Queen Frostine. Right. <laughs> right. Unless you pick the ice cream cone, yeah. you're going to lose. Right. You know, I've lost every single time to Abby. Right. Because she always gets the. Well, she cheats. She, yeah, she always gets There's the ice pe- cream people cone. People do that too. And I keep on getting yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow. And look, for ourselves, I'm not going to say I started on the starting line. I probably started above the starting line. I yeah. don't know where, not where that person from the talk show was, but <laughs> but I definitely started above the starting line. Yeah. Uh, and and I know people that started below the starting line. Yeah. So for me, it's 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 about the merits. I mean, that, and that's my problem. With, yeah, with them, with, with the Royals, and and those other things, and the other people too. I know. I'm not, so, and that's like a big thing. Like I'm not in any way like endorsing yeah. them at yeah. all. I'm just saying. They're right. screwed up too. No, they're and screwed, let me yeah. tell you how in aura. Color. All right, well, all right. My red rant <laughs> and is over. Let me over. tell you how in aura color. We actually are submitting this podcast late because I wanted to watch the funeral of Prince Philip and see what was going on because it was the first time. All right, so you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know the family tree. I don't know anything. Oh. You'll have to tell me. So the queen. I know you always try to tell. me. I think she's like ninety four, and she's green and blue, and she's okay. very usually green and stoic, and she was married to Prince Philip for like 70 something years and he passed and he was red and blue and so this funeral brought them all together now you know that harry and william those are her two grandsons okay um aren't talking or something right now so there's that's kind that was like with the funeral that like we got to see all the family together for the first time and we know that there's just in, in if nobody died they would never have done this but on national tv not long after harry had this like tell all interview saying things the royals never say in public they we get to watch them mingle so i was like absolutely dedicated on Saturday oh, to be like, what are their auras doing right now? So that's what, <laughs> that's what my interest is. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so. All right. So let me ask you. All yeah, right, so the, the queen you say is green and blue. Yes. Did she have a change in her aura? I mean, I know they, I, I watched a little bit cause you were watching it Yeah. and I saw her sitting alone. Yeah. Um, well, she has to cause she's special, Scott. Sure. <laughs> I'm right. trigger you. I'm going to trigger you <laughs> often. <laughs> she, I, I need to sit alone too. She was chosen okay. by God. Okay. So I, I, I understand. She was chosen by God. Divine right to, to rule. To sit alone. No, it's actually and, really sad. Yeah. I feel All right, bad so for did her. Did she have a change in her, her colors or was she still She's always green. green. Like every time I look at her throughout all her, her, the documentaries I constantly watch and whatnot. Like she's got this very green uh, aura, which is very stoic, very put together, very controlled. Well, when I saw her at the funeral, like the blue took over the greens there, but it's just very muddled blue. I mean, I just, listen, we always see her as a queen, but today we saw, you know, or on Saturday we saw her as a, like a woman who's sad. And I think that the energy is palpable for everybody who's watching. So there's, there's a shift there. I think we're seeing a change. She lost her her partner so the so the green came down green came down and, and, the, fu- blue. and the blue raised and it's not like it's too much blue for too her blue she's for not her. used to have it leading with the blue and it's like all blue and so i feel like she's feeling the overwhelm she's feeling this you know she's usually kind of like a outside perspective person mm-hmm. to how she acts or what's going on and all that and that's where she takes a lot of her strength from but i feel like I mean, and it makes sense because she's mourning. She's an inward person right now. She's just thinking about her own mourning and her own grief, and she's not as um, you, wide scope. I don't as mean usual. to put you on the spot here. Yeah, go ahead. Do you feel that blue is going to stick around for a while and maybe re- rule like the rest of her? I mean, she's really or whatever. Old, you know, yeah, no, so she, it's yeah. kind of like, and I hate talking like this, but I, I just feel like with her, she's a strong lady, and okay. I feel like she'll get through this better than a lot of people. Maybe could, but I and and but I do feel like this has changed her permanently. Okay. Yeah. Her okay. her energy. All right. So now let me get this. See if I can get this straight. So the next Charles will be doing more. Prince too. Charles is her. She has four kids. One of her kids. Yeah. Oldest kid. So Charles is the eldest, and, and he's the heir. Okay. And how and rough? Do you know how old he he's is? Like or se- no? like early seventies. Okay. And now, and I just have to because people are gonna everybody. <laughs> Andrew, if you watched. The Epstein documentary, which I know you did and I did. Yes. And um, trigger warning. Andrew is one of her sons. So it goes Charles, Anne, and then Andrew, and then I think it's Edward is the youngest. But Andrew 
is her second youngest. So it's Prince, Char- Prince Charles, Charles is the oldest. Mm-hmm. Andrew second. Well, no, it's Andrew. Then they, uh, she has her daughter Anne. Okay, daughter Anne. And then Andrew. Then Andrew. So he's the third of four children. Okay. He was. He's the one that allegedly was part of like pedophile island right and with underage girls there's pictures there's like eyewitness accounts things like that and they're protecting him yeah which is I mean, just i can't even like when i saw him my yeah. stomach turned and he was walking behind the coffin and nobody said anything and i know it's a funeral and like because i was watching the cnn coverage and i'm like eh, like is this somebody gonna say something like about how sick and gross this is that we all have to look at him i mean it- I know his dad died, but like, yeah. but probably, it, probably because it's like the funeral. Yeah, yeah but like, it's, it's like, like that's what I mean. They do stuff like that. Yeah. you know what I mean. And it's like, <sighs> I will, I'll tell you. I actually, when I was watching it too, I, he creeped me out too. He's chameleon green. Chameleon green. So that's like, it's like almost shape shifting. It's it, at, here. Oh, this is what's interesting because people always ask me about this. When I, because I read people all the time, ninety nine point nine percent of the time when I read somebody. And this is why I'm very humbled and blessed to do this. I feel people's insecurities. And that's normal. Like when I read you, like not you, but I'm saying the hypothetical you, the listeners, like when I read one of you, like I will feel all the ways you feel like you're a horrible human, which is why we have to go in and fix you. Like our spirit has to go in and fix you. And here's what you have to work on this. And the 0.1%. When I read somebody who thinks they're amazing, that's a red flag. And that's how Andrew feels to me. Oh my God. Like no conscience, thinks he's great, nothing to work on. That's weird. That's weird. Yeah. So that's like this chameleon green, like anything you need to hear, he'll say. Okay. Freaks me out. All right. So let's put that guy. Yeah, that's gross. Moving on. Yeah. Let's put him off the side. Okay. Okay. Forget about that guy. He seems disgusting. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but gross. Okay. Okay. All right, so Prince Charles. Let's go back to Prince Charles. Prince Charles. All right, so he's in line to be the king. Yes. He's 70-something. Yeah. So secretly he's probably, I mean, I don't want to say this, but he's probably been waiting for his turn. His whole life. His whole life. Yeah. And he's probably like, when's my turn going to be? What's his colors? He's blue and purple, but he wears an authentic green. I mean, the guy feels very, the whole thing's dysfunctional because they always put appearances over how you feel inside and i think you have to be born into that to understand it but he's blue and purple but his aura to me i feel like we're going to be seeing him a lot more by the way okay. stepping in and stuff like that because i felt like kind of like um a definition to him in his auric shell more than i've ever seen before usually he's kind of like this fuzzy blue with this inauthentic green with the purple like real actually i only see the purple in him when he's hanging out with camilla otherwise i don't see it do, do you see the green when he's hanging out with the queen? Because you said she's green. No, yeah, it's it's there. It's just not authentic to him, so it feels funny. So obviously he – obvious – and when we talk about um, William, the, his son, that will okay. make more sense. But there's something with the green and being a ruler. There's something where that little microcosm of the monarchy only accepts that energy as a ruler or monarch energy because he wears it inauthentically and it's obviously been like shoved on him his whole life but he's actually very sensitive and blue which just means he feels other people's feelings as his own and i feel like he feels very victimized sometimes by his station in life and all these things um and he was married to princess diana okay so that's he was originally married that was his first first wife first wife by which he had william and harry Okay. And now yeah. everyone loved Everybody Princess loved, Diana. Yes. I mean, for the most part. Yeah. She was beloved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and she was not a royal. Was she a royal or no? Yeah, I think she was some title or okay. something, but she definitely had a very normal life. Like, I think she was like a preschool teacher. A teacher she taught thing? little children. Okay. Like, so she had a job and, and whatnot. And, and when I think when she got engaged or married, she was like 19. I mean, she was so young. Okay. And... She was very blue, but like a beautiful blue, like very sweet, very innocent. And we all know a lot about her, but I feel like she truly tried to use her platform to show people to raise others up. I really feel like she didn't feel deserving of it if she couldn't bring other people into it that had no voice. And like all the things that you're saying about like merit and this and that, I feel like she's the type of person that understood that yeah. and wanted to bring the voiceless up with her. So if you're next to me and I'm hugging this child who everybody says, oh, don't hug them, they're diseased, or I'm walking through this minefield where children have been playing, now now they're all paying attention, aren't they? Mm. So she's going to throw herself on the fire in order to get people to pay attention to her causes. And that to me... 
she tried to use it the best she could, but then they called her, you know, they had a lot of issues with her. Yeah. They had a lot of issues with her. And then, and honestly, because the public, I think how, and, and the public, how we see things as collectively, we can pick up on stuff. And I think we picked up that she felt ostracized and not appreciated the way the public appreciated her. So there, we felt that distance. Right. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, for me, she's one of the ones that Princess Diana goes down as being someone like you said, like more of the people, yeah. someone that maybe is more based off the merits rather yeah. than is born into just, that was it. Like she so, really wanted her children yeah. to feel loved and yeah. normal. That yeah. was a big thing for her. Yeah. And that, and that did come across. Yeah. Okay. So then he, and then, okay, so then she passed. They, no, they got divorced. Oh, they got divorced. She left him. Oh, she left him. That okay. was, yeah, a mess. Okay. And then she passed. And, and then, then she died in the car crash in yeah, 1997. Yeah, remarry before? So he, Charles, has had, had this ongoing, which he'll, they'll deny, but who, like, Diana said, you know, he said, she said, whatever. Right. Camilla was his true love that they didn't let him marry. Because, oh, because in that family, like, you can't marry divorced people. It's like this whole rule or whatever. So anyway, so he wanted to be with her, but she was married at the time and then divorced and this and that. So anyways, Camilla. Okay. So he knew her before, was allegedly having a relationship during the marriage to Diana, and then brought her in after, and then married her. And she was royal or no? Again, I think some sort of title or something. Okay. I don't know. Now, I have... I don't know all the titles. I'm not that good of a watcher. Like, if she was walking down the street, yeah. Camilla, and she wasn't have, like, 17,000 soldiers behind her, wow. I would have no idea who she is. Or yeah. looks like, is that... Would most people know who they, she is? They keep her out of stuff. Like, she comes to things. She's yellow, by the way. And what happens is, is I feel like she's hyper aware of the details of things. And it's like her, her energy gets real nervous. I I can like, even during the funeral, like watching it, it's like, she's there. She was invited, you know, and everything, but, and you know, it's just kind of like, she's off. She's off. Like her energy feels off. I just feel like she feels, she wasn't very well received by people, nor the family. And I get that she just totally picks that up. And okay. Well, if you're competing with Princess Diana, probably. It was bad, That's yeah. That's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, and she's also, again, I would, like, if she walked right across the, like, right across the, you know, in the street for me, I wouldn't know if she was. All these people look very normal. Yeah. Diana was gorgeous. I mean. Yeah. No, like, 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 if Prince Harry walked by me, I would know who he is. Well, yeah. I've well, seen he, him enough okay, on TV. You, yeah, William. Yeah, but, you would think. I like, would think some think of these people, know I wouldn't know. Too. If you put them in street clothes. Um. <laughs> So Camilla also older, like in the 70s or 60s? Yeah, she must or 60s. be around the same age, yeah. Okay, and did Charles and Camilla have any kids? Not together. Not together, okay. So then Charles and Diana had Harry. Mm-hmm. William first. William first. Then Harry. Then Harry. So William's the heir. Okay, so let's go to William. What's okay. The, I have, again, I think I know what he looks like. Yeah. But I'm not too sure. So William is green and blue. Okay. So he's pretty well set. To be the heir. Okay. Having said that, I feel like a lot of him from... I feel like they used that blue in William to kind of be like, this is the only way or else you don't survive. Like, it was very much... I don't know what they do in their programming over there, but the guy feels like relegated to this is my life. And whether he wants to or not, it's kind of just... And even Harry said in the interview with Meghan Markle, he said, he's trapped. He's trapped. Yeah. And it's hard to call somebody trapped who has, like, servants and valets. And I I get all that. You know what I mean? But, like, his soul. Like, because at the end of the day, like, that's all you can be spiritually. You know? Like, it's hard for him. You know, he can't do what his heart desires. And then... um, So, anyway, so, yeah, he's green and blue. And he's... But during the funeral, man, he was picking up a lot of red. Inauthentic red. Okay. And I feel like he feels pissed off i feel like he feels like his partner in crime his brother harry, harry kind of left them and i think it's a brother issue it's a sometimes i call things sibling issues which are like you know if you're married to somebody and like your i don't know, your husband gets in a fight with his brother or sister it's like you stay out of it for the most part if it's not that bad because it's just sibling yeah. stuff because what do siblings do at any point they brush it under the carpet you know what i mean that's just how siblings like oh whatever we're getting over it moving on and I feel like that's how William and Harry can be if the spouses don't interfere, uh-huh. which I feel like could be the impetus to their total reunification um, relationship-wise. But I'm getting ahead of myself. But they were talking right. after the funeral, and I saw something happen. So I want to talk about that, but oh, keep okay. going. All right. So, okay, so <laughs> Prin- uh, William. Yeah. Prince William? Prince, Prince William, William? Okay. yeah. He's a green and blue. Mm-hmm. You feel... 
he might have the, he he seems like he has the demeanor to be a more of a king. Yeah. You know, a king. I know. I'm okay. Sorry. Um and Prince Harry, yeah. what are his colors? So Harry is well, they stripped him of all his titles, so I think he's just Harry now. Um, oh, okay. So I don't know. Harry Schwartz. Yes. Okay. Harry, Harry Schwartz. Schwartz from Brooklyn. Right. He, well, he's he's blue and purple. Very very sensitive. Now, before Megan, all I saw was like this very fuzzy fuzzy blue, immature energy. Who the purple would come out. He pur- he purple bombed big a lot. He did a lot of stupid stuff, and I feel like he was just trying. He was pissed off at. The monarchy, the firm, they call it, you know, probably the people running the show. Yeah. Because, like, it's not just a family. There's a whole corporation around it because, like, all these tax dollars are getting funneled in. So they're, like, are, they're like totally ruled by, like, government and government rules and stuff like that. So I feel like Harry was purple bombing all over the place. He was always trying to poke the bear and see if he could get people mad at him. And I, and, and I feel like, ultimately, he finally found somebody who could help him leave, and that was Megan. Megan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because so, it didn't work. They would like, nope, you're still here. <laughs> so let me ask you this before we actually move on with that. Yeah. So William, going back to William, yeah. he married Kate. Kate. Yes. Ooh, now, what are good. her colors? Because yeah. I want to compare her to Megan and see if that, that influence you were talking about. So what what Kate's Yeah. Colors? So William married Kate. And okay. she's, and again, if British people are watching, because I've actually gotten this in my DMs, I don't know their titles, and it's okay that I don't. Like, I'm I, not going to get all weird I about to- it. So totally some people okay. are like, you have to call her this, and you have to call Megan this. It's like, all right, listen, no. I, this is just me being an American talking about it. I don't yeah. know their titles. Sorry. But Kate <laughs> is blue and purple. Okay, so she's a blue purple. Yeah, and I feel like what, and then Megan. Oh, yeah, what's Megan? Megan's uh, blue and purple, too. But Megan leads with her purple. Okay. And Kate has this, like, very dark blue thing going on where I feel like she feels, you know, like when you're a pleaser, some of you will understand this. You don't understand this at all, Scott. You know, when you're a pleaser and you feel like you're good and I'm doing all the right things and I'm being a good girl and I'm doing everything I have to do. And you can feel even victimized sometimes because you don't have a choice. And I don't think Kate has a lot of choices. So she's like, nope, I have to do this and I have to make my kids do this. And I ha- I don't want to go to this function, but I'm going. And I ha- And even though I want to be mad at my husband right now. I have to smile at him and hold hold his hand. And she'll do all that stuff. And I think what happened was she met Megan, who led with her purple. And her and Megan would be like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to have a baby and go like two hours after I deliver this baby, go stand out in front of a hospital to watch to, so everybody can come look at him. I'm not doing mm-hmm. that. And she didn't. And I can see, and then, I mean, I can just see for Kate being like, Instead of being like, hey, I should do that too, being like, hey, you know, what's her deal? Like why, yeah. you know, victimized even further and triggered by Megan who does do things and does lead with her heart and has a husband that supports her actually with it. Like, yeah, we're not doing that. She doesn't want to and we're not doing it. Instead of her husband that's like, no, this is what we do. So it, it I feel like Kate's not a bad person. I, so there was like this whole drama, like who made who cry? Because like the yeah. media said... Megan made Kate cry and Megan was like crucified for it. And then Megan said, no, Kate made me cry, but we got over it like that. And I think it was just that, I think Megan's version. So, so basically it, it seems like if you put this into any family yes. and not just as royal nonsense. Yeah, it's just a family. Yeah. And, right. Just a regular family. Yeah. It seems like Harry is like kind of like that rebellious kid. Yeah. And then Prince William is that guy that, you know, He's just going to do everything right. Yeah. You know, he's like, your dad owns the firm and he, yes. he's going to be, he's going to work his way up all the rankings. <laughs> yeah. And then like Tommy boy, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Harry's like Tommy boy. And Harry's like Tommy boy. <laughs> That's exactly right. it. Or he's like, uh, you know, Will Ferrell and Step Brothers. He's that, you know, he, he's just that other right. guy. Right. Yeah. That's and, so funny. You know, so you have the one brother that does everything right. Yeah. And then the other brother who's like that goofball ball and they don't want to give him the keys to the company ever. Right. You know, not that Harry can get it because he's like 18 people down the line. Right. Of the night, and it's nothing based so on So why merit. should he sit around yeah. to get nothing anyway? Exactly. And Megan was like, hey, yeah. why? and I think what happened is, hey, why do we have to be treated like crap all the time? Let's please move. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then they just, were like, yeah, bye. Yeah, we'll talk to Oprah, get a $100 million Netflix deal, and we'll call it a day. Yeah, okay. and I believe everything that she said that happened to them. You know what I mean? With like the racism, and the, I believe all that stuff. Right. And I just feel like what happened was, is they were just like, peace out. Yeah. We don't have to do this. And that is not an option for William. So right. hence, right. him and Kate. But, but you know what I happened, I feel? Because then there was the service. And then, I don't know if you guys watched it like I did. <laughs> because, like, 
And then there was like there was some other royal watcher camera. What do they call those things? Those things that go like this. Oh my gosh, the, I, the drones. Drone. There was some drone like following them as they walked uh, off. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is sad. But I'm like in there, I'm like okay. on top of the TV right. looking. And Kate <gasps> tell us. walked up next to Harry and then kind of like I could tell she was like pushing him towards William. So it was like Kate, Harry, and then William. And I felt Kate's energy, like I saw it, her blue energy kind of like reaching into Harry's. I felt she was doing that thing where she was trying to make peace. She was like, hey, William, don't you think it would be fun? You know, I don't know what they were saying, but don't you think it would be great if we did this? Or let's talk about this? Or where can we? Hey, remember that time? Like, I feel like she's trying to get the relationship back on track with everybody. Megan, too. I feel like she just wants this to end because in true empath fashion, this is flipping stressful. Yeah. And everyone's watching. Let's just get along. And I just felt like her doing that and i feel and you know so i just wanted to men- mention that because i feel like she's trying all right well because i saw her blue like mush in there i feel there's really only one solution for these royals and that is they should use better help better help <laughs> <laughs> I promise so we, we do have one more ad and we then just we, have one more ad <laughs> and then we are going to <laughs> deep dive into the dms yes and see what we can find but we have to talk about better help Okay, because I love BetterHelp. I tell you guys this all the time. I have my lady. She's yellow blue. I schedule my appointments on the app. Super easy. I can email her. Wait, hold on one second. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, got new things to talk to her about. (laughs) My misophonia, that's for sure. Um, Scott, you made me lose my track. (sighs) All right, so... I talk to her. I say, my husband slurps loud and I have this rage and she gives me tips. Okay. So what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. You can get some tools to help with motivation, depression, your misophonia, anxiety, battling your temper, stress, dealing with insecurity in relationships or at work, whatever you need. And it's time to stop being ashamed of like your normal human people struggles and start just feeling better because you know what? You deserve to be happy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. See if it's for you because you are your greatest asset. So guess what? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Know Your Aura listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash KYA. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash K-Y-A. So a new little segment here, it's called Deep Dive in the DMs with Mystic Michaela and Scott. I have to say, I get wonderful DMs from all of you. They all mean so much to me. I, I try to write back to all of them, um, but let's take a little journey and deep dive in. All right. What do so, you have for me, Scott? All right. So do you want to, how do you want to do this? Do you want to go into your DMs? Like maybe one first? and one or? Yeah, let, let's do one and one. Okay. Here, and let's see what we can come up with. All right. So I'm going into your DM box. All right. Get in there. I'm going into the 99 plus other box. Okay. And let me see. All right. So the what first one I found, mm-hmm. and I, I don't want to say their full names because I don't know, you know, it's probably personal, but we want them to at least be able to find it. So I'll just say right. the first person is uh, April. April. Okay. Right. April. What does April say? All right. April says, hi, Mystic Michaela. I absolutely love your podcast. Thank you so much for sharing with the world. I don't even have children but I'm listening to today's episode. That was the one. Oh, that's on last, kids. Yeah. the kids aura one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This was last Thursday. She sent it. Okay. You said something about possibly doing an episode on ancestral trauma. Yes. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I'd love to do that. I just thought I'd mention it in case you have space to bring this to the pod, and maybe more people are also interested in this topic. I've gotten a lot of DMs asking me to explore that. Okay. Yeah, because I talked about it in the kids episode. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Thanks for helping us see. The true, our true selves, and lean in. Hello to Scott, too. Oh, that's so sweet. Jumanji. Oh, yeah, we should have been saying Jumanji. Oh, Jumanji. Jumanji, Jumanji. Yeah, this would have been a good episode. This been, yeah, especially yeah. Like right when we were talking about Harry and Charlie and right. David and Schwartz. Okay, all right. Jumanji, P.S. Sorry my account looks suspect. I'm messaging you from my Finsta. Finsta. That's fake Insta, Finsta. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Because I can't handle logging into my normal account and mm-hmm. messaging people back in my DMs. Yeah. Sort of taking a break from all that. 
you know, blue people things. I'm telling you, so many empaths have thin stuff and fake fake Facebook profiles too. Like we just can't handle it. Can't so we just want to go on and interact with what we want to interact with and not with what we don't. Totally understand that. But I hear that a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, April. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Let's, let me go over to my DM. Oh, you're right. okay. Scott's DMs. What's in there? Okay. Let's see. All right. So, okay. I have not opened these either. They're in my other box. It says three. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, all right. What, okay, this one is from, um, it's a man, Charlie, mm-hmm. saying he wants me to be a brand ambassador for his swimsuit company oh. and asking if I'd be willing to wear this thong. That sounds like spam. Is that a spam? Yeah, I think so. I was going to write it back. Mm. Should I write it back? You're going to wear that thong? Well, he says you get a free suit. <laughs> like, I get the suit for free if I, if, I, if I put it on two stories and one post. okay. No. Not, yeah. No. All right. All right. We'll not move on me. from that. It's like yeah, Borat. Okay. What's it's, next? A, it's a little Borat y. All mm-hmm. right. All right. Let me look at, let me go back to yours. All okay. Right. Here we go. The next one is Alex, and he writes Hi, Mystic Michaela. My f- girlfriend got an aura reading, and I've listened to your podcast. I feel like I know my colors, but I'd like you to tell me what you think. Huge fan of the podcast. I'll send over a picture of myself now. And here is a picture of Alex. He is holding a cell phone. What are his colors? Oh, he's blue and purple. He's a blue and purple. All yeah. right, Alex. You are a blue and purple. All right. Our next DM. Okay. Okay. That will go to my box. Okay. Let's go to yours. All right. Back to yours. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Um, a couple of days ago, yeah. this is from a few days ago, I posted a picture of me getting my vaccine. Oh, yes. And I made, like, reference to, like, a group of people who feel like it can do certain things to your, you know, your sexuality. Your, your DNA, yeah. Your DNA. That getting the vaccine can turn you gay. That's right. like a conspiracy right. theory. Which, right. I, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I did it as a joke. Right, and you're excited about that possibility yeah, anyways. I'm not going <laughs> to say this guy's <laughs> name. Uh, we'll just call him Schwartz. Okay. Uh, not Harry Schwartz, but... Uh, and I, I got it. What do you mean? I got it. Oh, my first, I got my first, you know what pick? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, 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 and he wants me to rate it. Oh, Scott, I'm so happy for you. Should I rate it? Yeah. He wants me to rate his, his part. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Schwartz. Um, clearly a six. Okay. Six. Not the size, the, this, the rating, the rating. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to your team. Yes. Terribly awkward. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that kind of show. I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, we might have to have uh, Adam put the explicit label on this one. Right. Okay. All right. Next up we have, <laughs> have you ever, did, I know you get a lot of those, right? No, I don't get you, those. Oh, you don't? No. So I'm one up. On, I have one more than you have? Yeah. Oh, man. I got to really watch what stories I put up. All right. <laughs> Taylor writes, hi, I had fallen asleep on your podcast. Well, that's not nice. <laughs> she fell asleep to our podcast. All right. Not because it's boring. Ha ha. Because I love it and didn't want to turn it off. I, I, a lot of people do fall asleep to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night to episode 14, Empaths and the Holidays. Oh my gosh. I feel like I was woken up to listen to this episode because I relate to this one so much and maybe to let me know I wasn't Aww. alone. Thank you for bringing so much light and compassion to my world. Yellow heart. Taylor. That was like one of my early like little mini sods. Um, it's like a ha- it's a half hour empaths in the holidays of pep talk. <laughs> it's basically me talking to myself, yes. but like about <laughs> like and I'm hoping that it relates to you. Yeah. No, but seriously, I'm glad it helped because that's like my goal. Yeah. That was my total goal with it. That's awesome. I actually did have turkey listen to that episode and fell asleep as well. Yeah, Taylor. So yeah. <laughs> All right. My next, let's go back to my DMs. Okay. Um, my next DM says, hey, Scott, do you want to become a Forex trader? Oh. Do you know what that is? I think it's spam again. Spam. So yes. Ba- so basically I've gotten one pick of a man's privates mm-hmm. and two people spamming my account. All right. All right. Well, back, back to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Simon says. <laughs> His name really is Simon. No, it's Simon. This yeah. is not like Shaman says. You know, right. That was one of my favorite bits. Yeah. Uh, Simon says, Yay, Michaela. My wife and I have been debating my aura since you read hers. What do you think? And Simon sent some pictures. He's got one with him, I think, and his wife, and then a nice one of him, like, 
smiling and what's, yeah, what's I see Give, him. Which is color? He's so this is interesting because he's yellow. Oh, okay. And it's not often I see a yellow guy. So he's yellow. He's blue as well. He wears a little inauthentic green and red, but that's probably because of the. And if you listen to last week's episode, the inner child or the what's your kid's aura color episode, that makes sense. But like, you know, because it's hard for guys to maintain yellow. But yeah, he's yellow and blue with some inauthentic red and green going on. But I feel like he Whoa, knows that. A lot of colors. Yeah. Well, that, it, it feels like it's job related. Okay. That's a lot. That's the thing. Like sometimes people send me a picture and they're just like, what's my color? And it's like, oh, but that's a half hour conversation. Right. Like Simon. Right. Like, that's a lot right there. Like, that's like, we could go lots of directions here. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. He's yellow blue. Okay. Here's an easy one from, on your account again, from Jody. She just writes, what does the squiggly circle that she sees mean? Oh, yeah. So uh, the Mystic Michaela spiritual family and I have kind of solidified an emoji aura language. It's okay. like hieroglyphics for your aura. So there's this one, like, it's like a blue swirl. Yeah. And that's indigo. Okay. And the the, the hearts are just like, you know, red, blue, right. yellow, right. green, purple. But then for turquoise, sometimes we use the water drop. Okay. Um, sometimes there's, there's also this, like, diamond-looking thingy. It's like a, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Like a diamond. I don't know. It's something else. But that's what, it, so people use that for turquoise. Star seed, like it's a uh, Rain- rainbow. rainbow. Sometimes it's the alien emoji okay. with the sparkle, like all three of them together. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, what else am I missing? Pink, pink. pink. You can just use any pink two heart. Hearts, the two hearts, the yeah. two hearts. Or I, I like to use the pink heart with the little sparkles in okay. it. Okay, but yeah, yeah, we have a little emoji language. Okay. Um, next up, we have Megan. Okay. Again, your your box as well. Yes. I'm a, I'm only have two DMs left. That's why I have to. You have a lot more than oh, I do. Oh, okay. Doubling uh, up. Yeah, I got only two to go. Okay. So, she writes. Megan writes. All three. You did the uh, stories on the uh, Shit's Creek. So lately, I've been trying to do because <laughs> I did Shit's Creek and then I did the Vampire Diaries, and I do like side by side like the actor when they're acting versus the actor when they're not acting for all the cast. Right. So I did Shit's Creek. All right. And then like the you know the three leave. Levy's yeah. are the dad and the daughter and the son are all in that show together. Right. And they're all actually purple and blue. That's their actual aura colors. Yes. And that was her question. Why are, do, do you, all three Levy's are purple and blue. Do you often see that in families or is this just kind of random? That's right. Honestly, that's random. Like oh. I, I cannot find like a genetic correlation so much with aura colors um, and chil- you know, and the children that you have or whatever, like it's kind of, you get what you get just like with everything else. But I think it's pretty cool that they're all, um, purple, blue and they're all like, they feel really close too. They feel like a nice family. But then I was, and then when I was looking, their actual mom and his wife, like in real life, like she's, she's yellow. Okay. She's yellow. So I was like, oh, she organizes them. You can tell she organizes them. All right. <laughs> All right, let me go back to my account. Okay. And Okay, because I actually found a good one. I, I missed this one. Okay. And this is from an actual account I follow. It's called the Amish Craft Barn. Oh. And they write to me, stop DMing us. We aren't <laughs> interested. The, I, and I, the Amish, you can't. You know, I read it. I read, yeah. I read about this. It's very hard. You can't marry in. Right. You have to be born in. It's not like converting. You can't really convert. They don't, they don't really do that. Okay. I mean, it happens, but very rarely. So it's not going to happen, Scott. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. I'm sorry. I mean, I, God, right. you look broken. No, no. I, I mean, it, look, I, I sent seven DMs to them without getting a response. <laughs> and I have four of them say seen. <laughs> and then one of them just has the middle finger on it. No. And the other one just says stop DMing us. They're just like, stop yeah, it. Yeah, stop it. They're All like, right. please stop. All right. Let, let's go to this nice guy here that wrote okay. to you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Ethan mm-hmm. writes, hello, Michaela. A friend that is a big supporter of yours has opened my eyes to new aspects of life and especially what you do. Oh. I have listened to your podcast explaining aura color and how, and how knowing one's color can assist them in living a truer to their authentic self. I'm at a point in life where it has started to become stale. And even though I enjoy every day, if it's not too much to ask, would you be able to help me verify my aura colors? Mm. I believe based on what I've heard you say that I have an idea. But I am curious to see if what you think would match up with what I see. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Then, and he has another final question here too. Final question. In seeing so many people on a daily basis, would you not mistake a person's aura color if you saw them once again but years after? 
or is it not based on facial features, but an energy that the person gives off? Okay. Oh, like as they age or something? Yeah, okay. to say? yeah. Like he, I think he's trying to say there's like if you saw someone, let's say when they're in their twenties, yeah, and then you saw them again, would it be different? But I think okay, I, yeah. I understand what he's saying. Okay, any feedback would much be would much be appreciated. I truly would li- like to live a life that holds meaning for myself. Have a great day. Oh, and I he sent two guys, pictures, right? one next to a truck, right. the other one in the snow, and what's Ethan? Okay, so Ethan is definitely purple and blue. And he wears, I feel like he does a red job and he works with a lot of red people and, and just, so he has like that red kind of armor on that sometimes sensitive guys have to wear to feel like they can like fit in with the world and do things the, you know, the other guys find appropriate or whatever. But that part, that itch he's feeling it is, is his purple and that awakening he's feeling is that purple. Cause it's just like a louder energy when, and, and like where blues kind of want to They'll take in, they'll like, okay, like the ego can hijack the blue a lot easier because the blue is like, I want to be lovable and I want to fit in and I want to please other people. Um, and that's the one that's kind of like, okay, then I'll do red people things or whatever. I feel like his purple's getting louder and harder to ignore. So that's what I get with him. Now, the whole can you recognize people things, um, I guess, I don't know, like, so, like I'll do readings and people will give me like pictures from different various times in their life like kid teenager you know you know college and like beyond or whatever depending on how old they are and or it definitely shifts and moves and changes um usually it's your same colors but the balance can be different or i see things in there that are family influenced and whatnot in a different way okay yeah Excellent. all right thank you ethan for that thanks uh, all right, so the last one is going to be for mine, and I'm actually going to do a serious one to end it. I know usually I end on a funny one, but yeah. this time I'm going to be a serious one. Okay. Uh, this one comes from Sophie. Sophie actually wrote to me months ago. Okay. And, you know, she you know she wrote a whole thing, and she asked for her colors, and, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to ask you. Okay. And, of course, in true Scotty fashion, I told her I would ask you over the weekend, you know, when you weren't busy, <laughs> and that was, like, 20 weekends ago. Okay. Okay, and then... Just recently, she, you know, I put up that that picture with the vaccine, right? And you know, she, la- you know, did the laughing emoji on it, yeah. And I looked up and I said, "Oh my god, I forgot to ever ask you." Right? Then you feel bad, and I feel really bad. Yeah. So I asked her, "Could you please send a selfie?" And I would get that for you. So let's do this one on the podcast. Okay. Sophie is the last picture. There she is with her dog. Yes, I and, see her. You know, and the, the, she never like followed up or anything. I know. She never like harass. You know, I so know. Let's get her. She's super nice. Let's get her those colors. All right, she's blue and green. Um. Yeah, she's blue and green. Yeah, very much a healer. That's the energy I get from her. I'm just seeing this picture. She just feels like very much a healer, very chill, very zen, very one with whatever energy. She's very adaptable and flexible to like what's going on around her. Um, Green woman fashion, she feels like she was pushed into being yellow a lot, but she fought the good fight and she's green. So that's what I get. She feels like a bit of a loner in a good way, in a happy loner. Except for the dogs. Well, yeah. Loves the dogs, right? Yeah, animals don't count. Yeah. Well... Well, All I can say is yeah. I have learned so much more about the people that we just talked about than yes. the royals. I'd rather read those people all day. Me too. Because they're I down to earth you. by the merits. Yes. Uh, I'm going to take one last sip of water here. Oh God, please don't. Don't, don't, please. We were doing so well. <sighs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you're right, Scott, and I absolutely agree with you. That's why I always say I love reading just yes. regular people. Um, versus celebrities. I just try to read yeah. like kind of like people we all see at the same time because then you can kind of get like, oh, I'm like that sometimes or yeah. kind of reverberates into yourself and I can use it for like just a teaching moment or a comparison or, or yeah. something like and that. We, that, is a, that. Speaking of DMs, that is a DM that we do get a yes. lot. Like do you only read for celebrities no. or do you read for... <laughs> we do. I mean you do. I do, but not uh, only. Right. Yeah. And it's just that, you know, it's the wait lists are long, but we do read for... Yeah. For, yes, regular. You do. I mean, I I should start, but you do. (laughs) Thank you, guys. This podcast is for you and about you. And thanks for being with us today. You all take care. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.